Hi, I'm Glade Sowards. I'm a policy analyst with the Division of Air Quality in the Department of Environmental Quality. And uh, I research uh, ways to reduce emissions and hopefully address air quality, uh, air pollution in Utah. And today we're going to talk about Tier 3. Uh, that Tier 3 is something you hear a lot about, there's, uh, but, but there's some confusion about it. It's actually two standards. It's the latest generation of EPA standards for both vehicles and fuels. And we're going to talk about sort of how each of those things uh, factor in and how uh, they, it, Tier 3 as, as a combined total helps reduce emissions in Utah. I mentioned that Tier 3 is both a vehicle and a fuel standard, so we're going to start with the vehicle standards. And the vehicle standards are just uh, uh, a threshold for each pollutant that we care about uh, above which the car can't emit. So uh, the latest standard, Tier 3 standard, is 30 milligrams per mile of NOx and VOC emissions combined. And people often ask, well, how do I even know what, what my car is certified to? There's actually a really easy way to do that. So we're going to look under the hood of this car and show you what that looks like. If I can find the button. All right. Here we go. Okay, so under your hood you'll find a vehicle emission control information badge or sometimes referred to as an underhood ID and it's going to tell you what this car is certified to. So there's actually two programs in the United States. There's a EPA program, the federal program, and there's also a California program and states have the option to, to opt into the California program. Uh, they're both in their third generation. Uh, it's called Tier 3 under the federal government and LEV 3 California. This car specifically I'm looking at, first of all it tells you that it's a model year 2014. Uh, the Tier 3 vehicles didn't start rolling out until model year 2017 so we would expect this to be the previous generation which it says. Uh, in fact it says US EPA T2 B5 and what that means is Tier 2 Ben 5 and that's uh, just a, a sub-level or a, uh, what they call a bin within the Tier 2 program. And what that's telling me is that this car meets the fleet average requirement of 160 milligrams per mile of NOx and VOC. And it also has some other standards it's meeting for particulates and for uh, carbon monoxide. Were this a Tier 3 vehicle, uh, it, it would be uh, at least a model year 2017 or, or newer, and it would say either Tier 3 or T3 and a bin level. The, the goal we're going for with Tier 3 is what's called Tier 3 Ben 30. When Tier 3 is fully phased in, manufacturers will have to meet that 30 milligram per mile uh, fleet average across the vehicles they sell, sell into the EPA program. Uh, so when you go from 160 milligrams down to 30 milligrams, that's just a little over 80% reduction in emissions with that new uh, uh, tier level and what that is mostly coming from is better uh, emissions control equipment so you're going to have a better uh, catalytic converter it's oftentimes going to be closer to the engine or directly coupled with the exhaust manifold so that it heats up faster and helps with uh, cold start emissions which are a big problem uh, as, as many as uh, 60 to 90 percent of the emissions you have coming from your car happen in the first uh, minutes roughly after a cold start okay, so that sums up uh, what's going on on the vehicle side of the standard. Now we're going to talk about tier 3 fuels and how they fit in. All right, let's go. Okay. Okay, let's talk about tier 3 fuel and how that helps with emissions. So, when a catalytic converter is doing its job, reducing emissions from a car's exhaust, uh, sulfur in the fuel can cause problems, can coat the, the working surface of the catalytic converter and make that catalytic converter work less efficiently. So, consequently, when EPA has proposed uh, each generation of, of fuel standard or vehicle standard, they've proposed a fuel standard alongside it. So we talked about the tier two vehicle program before, uh, 160 milligrams per mile is the target there. And just uh, to, to help the manufacturers of those vehicles create a product that does its job, EPA also asked the refinery industry to reduce sulfur levels in fuel. 
And so they came down from above 300 parts per million to 30 parts per million for the Tier 2 program. Uh, similarly, with Tier 3, since there was, they were going for such a big reduction in emissions, again, another roughly 80% for the vehicle side of things, they needed to get that sulfur level down so the CAT could do its job more efficiently. So the new standard is 10 parts per million, and that's an annual average that each refinery has to meet to qualify to, to meet the standard uh, and to help, help the car do its job. The interesting thing about it, though, is that EPA allowed, for, for flexible compliance, they allowed uh, refiners to also meet the credit, or alternatively meet the credit, or the, meet the target, rather, via credits. And uh, the way the credits work is, let's say you are a uh, refinery company that has a really big Gulf Coast refinery that makes maybe uh, 200, 300,000 barrels of uh, petroleum a day, uh, you might have economies of scale when you retrofit that refinery to make the new tier 3 fuel. And so you might decide to over comply at that refinery and not necessarily do it here at your small volume refinery on the Wasatch Front. Uh, and while that would still comply to use credits with the standard, it doesn't do us the benefit that we need here along the Wasatch Front. Well, let's, first let's talk about what is that benefit. Not only does Tier 3 fuel help that Tier 3 vehicle get the 80% reduction in emissions that we talked about earlier, but it'll even help your existing vehicle, say a Tier 2 vehicle, get about a 14% reduction in NOx emissions and about a 4% reduction in VOC emissions almost overnight. After a couple of tanks of fuel, uh, your vehicle is going to get cleaner just by burning this fuel. Um, so it was important for us that we had our local refineries actually make the fuel so we get that correct, that we get those emissions reductions and not just comply on paper. And so that's what this has all been about. And so now we're going to go and fuel up with some uh, tier three fuel. Oh, we're going to fill up with tier three fuel. It's pretty easy. It's just like you've always done it. Sorry. So it doesn't matter what octave or octane level you uh, choose. We're just going to choose the the cheap stuff. And fill it up like you always would. We all care about air quality. Uh, you know, I, I live and work on the Wasatch Front. I love being in Utah. I'm a big outdoor uh, nut. I like to get out and, and raft and backpack and do all that stuff. And it's such, a, such an amazing state for that kind of thing. And, uh, but that also makes it popular, right? And so people want to move here and uh, you know, we, 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 that gives us really great uh, economic growth and, and the opportunity to share our, our uh, you know, unique um, uh, or, you know, wild areas with folks and, and this quality of life we have on the Wasatch Front. But the trade-off is uh, we've got to sort of fit more people into our existing airshed and how do we do that. So uh, again, if you can go from, uh, you know, an 80% reduction from our old Tier 2 vehicles to Tier 3 vehicles and have that fuel help out, uh, that's going to help maintain that quality of life and make it so you know I can continue to enjoy uh, you know the recreation and uh, uh, opportunities we have here, and and so can everyone else. So.